the Minister of Information and Culture, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, called on the immediate or for the immediate cancellation of the ongoing membership registration of the All Progressive Congress APC in Kwara State. Now, he's alleging that the exercise was marred by fraud and irregularities in the 16 local government areas of the state. Mohammed demanded the putting in place of a process to ensure the conduct of a credible and fair exercise that would enjoy the support and the confidence of all. Now, according to him, uh, that he alleged that there is a clear indication yet that the police and other security agencies may be complicit in what he described as the mess being made of the membership registration in Quara State. According to him again, instead of using the membership registers, the registration officials were using exercise books or false cap sheets to register members. Now, joining us to discuss this is Honorable Abdul Mumin S. Katibi, and he is a former commissioner for water resources in Kwara State. Thank you very much, Honorable, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me here. Yeah. All right, so let's start by um, looking at what the Honorable Minister has alleged. I mean, that's a long list of things. Uh, in, in first and foremost, he calls it a mess. Uh, what, what happened and what you called uh, uh, re registration and revalidation. And um, we also realize that there have been so <coughs> much drama coming from the APC in Kwara State lately. And for the minister to call out the APC <laughs> in his state um, and alleging that all of the registration process was marred. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Well, thank you very much. The allegations of the minister are spurious. And like you said, there have been so many dramas, even prior to this uh, membership registration and revalidation exercise. The, but the first question to ask, has the minister been able to register or not? Uh, some of his, uh, or many, many of his uh, co-travelers in their wide dream of wanting to control the APC in Quara, have they been registered or not? The answer to these questions are they are all been registered. So where are the allegations coming from? And then, if you look at the text of his uh, press uh, conference, it shows what the minister and his co-travelers have been doing. If in 2018, groups of people come together to form the party, and you are still talking about tendencies in 2021, honestly, I don't understand. Now, the, 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 well, he... the minister is supposed to be a leader of the party in the state who's supposed to work together with the governor to, you know, uh, put the party in a proper shape for coming elections. But what do we have? What the is... minister has not been cooperating. He has not been, he has not been available. When you say when you so say the minister when you say the, the minister has not been cooperating or he has not been available, you know, there's let me the minister is not here to defend himself, but let me ask. Um, we know that there are three big wigs in the party in the state. We're talking about the governor, we're talking about the Minister of State for Transportation, and we're also talking about the Minister for, for Information or if, of Information. These are three big wigs, and of course, this means that there, there will be people who are loyal to all of these three big blocks. But has there been a hand of friendship extended to the minister, uh, according to what you're saying, to join hands, to work, to build the party and mend fences? Has there been that <coughs> level playing field? Has there been that call or handshake to bring all warring factions together? Because I remember, uh, if not last week, the upper week, we had uh, a very disturbing video of what resulted from meeting that was supposed to bring party men together. I mean, that video is playing right now where men, uh, elderly people, were throwing seats at each other and fighting. I mean, that doesn't show a united front. So again, I ask, has there been an extension of a hand for all parties to come to a table and have a conversation? Thank you very much. I just said something that the minister has not been operating and has not been available. 
during the electionary time, because the party didn't just start now. It started even before the election. And the facts are out there. The, everybody is aware. Yes, the ministers are leaders in their, in their own respect. But to talk about a standing hand of fellowship, the governor was there when the minister was being screened by the National Assembly. The governor was there during the, after, I mean, during the inauguration of the minister, the reception in his, in his place. And for God's sake, these people want to continue to promote their tendencies, so-called tendencies. Should we still be having tendencies as at now? And they have been using the former party chairman to cause all troubles up to now. And what that video you said you are showing, if you look at it, you can find out, do your search. People are inv were invited to attend uh, a meeting with the uh, people from Abuja who are the, uh, the registration and the validation officials from Abuja. Uh -huh. And these people invited stakeholders and party leaders. And Bashir Balaniwa, uh, Omolaja, he the former chairman of the party, was among the people that were invited. But when he was coming in, he said he must go in with the retinue of talks and all the other miscreants that were together with him. And the security men said, no, anybody whose name is not on the list will not enter. They had to force their way in, and they started all the troubles. All those chairs you are seeing, going, is by them. Well, again, Honorable Bolaranwa is not here to defend himself. But let me go back to... I hope to... you will invite him to come and do that. Well, we tried, but he, he did not respond to us. So um, let me go back to some of the things that the um, minister pointed out. He did call for the immediate disbandment of the um, uh, John Damboy-led membership registration committee. Um, he's saying that for the vast majority of APC stakeholders in the state have no confidence in that committee. Is he really speaking for everybody? And I do know that you uh, are in, in opposition to his um, statements, but really, if, there, he, if he be a leader of the party, there have to be several people also in the party who think, of, who think this way, right? I just hope you invite more uh, people from Kwara to talk about this. And let me tell you, the call by the Minister for the Constitution of the Registration and the Transition Society is a fallacy. And nobody is going to listen to him. Because you can check. Let them come out in any polling unit where anybody is denied registration or the validation. This is an exercise where we are also inviting others who, are, who have never been part of our party to come and join. So if we are inviting people from outside the party, why are we going to exclude people within the party to register or invalidate their membership? This is laughable. Going forward, what is the governor of the state? Because again, he seems to be the leader of the party. What is the governor doing to address all warring factions as it stands right now? Because I remember when it's first the, the, this issue first resurfaced or surfaced, it was the issue that the party chairman was replaced without due consultation. And uh, the group of people that were on my show kept saying that they did not know about the new chairman and you know, they did not accept him and that the governor was trying to divide the party. And now here you are saying that, oh, it's the honorable minister who is being um, 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 evasive. He's not um, allowing for uh, dialogue to happen. But really, is this a... Is this a power tussle of sorts as to who wants to lead the party? And where will all this end? You see, uh, the fact that some people have access to make noise, they have access to the media, does, that does not represent the generality, uh, the view of the generality of the members of the party in Kwara State. And I want to assure you that the membership registration and the validation exercise is going on very well. 
And at the end of the day, we will have a stronger pool. The party will come out stronger. So all that you have seen and that you are still seeing are normal in any uh, party uh, situation. So we are going to go over it. And the governor is doing his best to ensure... So you're telling me that what we politics. saw in that video is very normal when it comes to party politics. The violence that we saw that broke out in Kwara State, you're saying that that's normal? And if you were to be no, no, advertising no, no, no. for don't, people don't to come join wrong. your party, no, 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 you're no, telling no. me that me. that is actually normal? Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is this. What you have seen in that video is an association by the minister's boys, led by BOB, the former party chairman. Because in a normal situation, when you are invited to attend a program, and you said you are going to go into that program with people that were not invited, I don't know. If you look at it, it that's not normal. That's all I'm saying. That, that's not normal, of course. And they went in just to cut all the troubles that you have seen in that video. That's not normal. And that's all we are saying. They've tried their best. They've gone to court to stop the process. And they failed. Mm -hmm. Not once, not twice. Okay. So when that failed, and they knew that the process, the process is going to go on, then they want to, they want to destroy the process. And that was what you have seen in that video. Okay. So I'm not saying that is normal. But what I'm saying is normal is that you have disagreement in democratic settings. So, and uh, uh, disagreement is normal. We have to disagree to agree. All right. That's what I'm saying. It's normal. Not All the right. violence that you are but, seeing. Well, I, I want to... an admiration, and nobody is happy about it. Well, I want to thank you, Honorable Katibi uh, abdul Mumin. Uh, thank you very much for being part of this conversation. Hopefully, um, the matters in your state party could be resolved sometime soon. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Well, we'll take a short break and see how Nigerians feel about President Buhari's leadership and his administration. And when I return, I'll give you my take. This, this administration is nothing to hide right to me about. Since I was born, I have never seen such a situation in my life. It's very, very unbearable. Very unbearable. Okay, the other time, the other time of a uh, pro uh, protest, when protest of uh, answers. Okay, you cannot beat a child, and you expect that child not to cry. The people have been bearing, thinking that one day, one day, things will get better. You understand? People came out to cry out. Instead of listening to them, you decide to kill them. So where are we going? Where are we going? If, if, if our, by our attitude, if God should take us by our attitude, nobody will be uh, resisting today. You understand? So right now, I don't think we have any Nigeria right now as we are talking. I don't know about tomorrow. But right now, there's nothing like, nothing like government. I will not want to cast as passion or say much about the government. But uh, like in my place, they will tell you, don't they tell blind man say rain the fall. So it's clear to, to even the birds in the air that uh, things are not just going on right. All right? So I think that answers the question. Nigeria is not faring well, seriously. In fact, this, has, in fact, this is the worst set of governments we are passing through in this country. This is the worst. Because a lot of things are happening. Insecurity in the states. Crises are happening. Famine in the land. No job. We know that these have been the yes, these have been we know that these have been the challenge of Nigerians, but this one is the worst. This one is the worst. So we really need we really need a good governance in this country. Well here's my take. Really, what can I say? We've all seemed talked out and tired because all our screaming and shouting and our appeals to our leaders seem to fall on deaf ears. Our institutions are weak. We have more strong men in Nigeria than credible leaders. We have self-serving leaders that shut their eyes to their people's plight. Insecurity is rife. 
the future of young people seems bleak. The country in itself seems to only benefit those at the top. But what about the people? The one you swore to serve, to, to lead and give a new lease of life. The promises you made to rid us of terrorism and bad leadership, to reduce unemployment and boost our economy. You promised to kick out corruption, yet it's grown in its lips and bounds. All we see is the total opposite of all the promises we were made. So dear Nigerian, where does this leave us? Is it enough to say, let's wait till 2023? How are you waiting? What preparations are you making so you don't make the same mistake come 2023? How do we put an end to this terrible cycle of bad leadership in different shapes and forms? Well, the answer lies with you. I am Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening. <music>